Hi, I'm Sam Hawley, coming to you from Gadigal Land. This is ABC News Daily. They're smaller than a fingernail, but tiny computer chips are behind what's been dubbed an act of war between the United States and China. The US has undertaken a monumental shift in policy, banning exports of advanced chips and stopping American investment in sensitive Chinese tech. Today, Dr Benjamin Hersevich from the ANU School of Regulation and Global Governance on why the decision could further isolate China from nations like Australia and could reverberate for decades to come. Ben, very recently, Joe Biden did something that most of us probably didn't even notice, but it was really significant because it involves China and America's relationship with China. So we've had an executive order from President Joe Biden putting out for consultation a plan on behalf of the US government to restrict outbound investment flows. So this is US finance, US venture capital, US institutional banks investing elsewhere in the world. And they're planning to restrict that investment flowing into China, in particular industries associated with semiconductors, quantum information technologies and artificial intelligence and the like. Right. Okay. So before we go any further, what are semiconductors and all those other words that you just used? (laughs) (laughs) So essentially what the US government is concerned about is the ability of Chinese companies to produce semiconductors, chips that are in all the different forms of technology that we use today, whether it's a mobile phone, whether it's a smart TV, whether it's your car. And they're particularly concerned about those semiconductors that are called to be at the leading edge. So those semiconductors that are really advanced in terms of their technological capability. And that means that those are the kinds of chips that can allow things like targeting of missile systems and all these complicated calculations and process large amounts of information. So essentially, the United States government wants to restrict the ability of Chinese companies to do that advanced manufacturing work in the semiconductor industry that will then give them an advantage when it comes to processing huge amounts of information quickly. Mm, So effectively, Joe Biden has stopped private business doing business with China in the high tech field. He also made a decision back in October last year, a similar decision. The semiconductor export controls from October of 2022 were about the export of semiconductors themselves, the equipment that is used to manufacture semiconductors, but also the intellectual property associated with manufacturing semiconductors. Making these chips in America is going to help lower the cost for families looking to buy a car to replace your washing machine, get a new cell phone. It also helps companies outcompete the rest of the world. And I've got heard from Xi Jinping that he's a little concerned about that. No, I, I'm, not, I'm not joking. It's not, as I told him, it's not about conflicts, it's about competition. And we're back in the game. We're competing again. Making- so these two big decisions are closely related and they're part of a concerted push on the part of the US government to slow down China's innovation. In terms of the significance of both that previous restriction on the export of semiconductors and this new restriction on outbound U.S. investment, it's critical to keep in mind that the U.S. government sees itself as taking a very targeted approach. They're targeting at the leading edge and the most advanced semiconductors, the most advanced uh, chips. We invented the damn chip, the United States. I'm serious. Think about it. Joe Biden stresses it's a national security action, not an economic one. So as I understand it, this is all about concern in Washington about China's military. Is that right? That's right, essentially. I think it's a broad set of national security concerns that Washington has about Beijing. And we live in a world now where 
technological and economic developments have massive security implications. And as we're seeing here, security concerns and security developments have massive technological and economic implications. Everything is intertwined. When Chinese technology companies are producing these kinds of advanced technologies, that is not just a question of innovation and a question of economic growth for China and advantages that China might gain in the technological or economic realm. It also has profound national security and defense implications. Absolutely. So, Ben, let's look at what this means for U.S. relations with China and then, of course, what that means for us, because it comes at a really fraught time already. And I can see some commentators have said this move is akin to an act of war. That is an understandable assessment to make. I think on some level we are in an age where war is being conducted by other means. It's not just about missiles and bullets Mm -hmm. and naval platforms and soldiers. It's also about economic policy levers and technological policy levers. Countries like China and the United States, they are engaged in an incredibly competitive and adversarial relationship. And they're competing and attacking each other, not just via traditional military means through military brinksmanship and the like, but via all of these tools of economic statecraft, essentially the ability to use your economic policy levers to achieve your national objectives. And that's what the United States is doing here. And China sees this on some level as an act of war by Mm. other means. It's acting in the gray zone, using all of these other measures to attack China. There need not be a new Cold War. We're going to compete vigorously, but I'm not looking for conflict. I'm looking to manage this competition responsibly. In terms of the nature of the US-China relationship and where it's going, the significance of both the export controls on semiconductors and this latest restriction on outbound investment is that in the past, China accused the United States of having a containment policy towards China, trying to hold China back Mm -hmm. economically, trying to stall its development. On some level, you are in the business of trying to hold China back technologically and by extension hold China back economically. So we are entering a new era of US-China relations and by extension we're entering a new era of world politics. Well, China's really angry, as you say. It has accused the US of containment and suppression. But of course, China's trying to achieve military dominance. So what sort of impact will this decision actually have on China and its quest to build up its military? This is an incredibly important and difficult question to answer. I think Uh the simple truth of the matter is that we don't know what the medium to long-term implications will be. China is in the business of massive industrial policy aimed at spurring its own domestic innovation. And that was taking place quite aside from these export restrictions and the restrictions on outbound investment. So China understood that it needed to unwind its dependence on US technology and US finance. And the big question out of that becomes, to what extent can China innovate effectively and grow its technology sector without those critical inputs from the United States? One optimistic story from Beijing's perspective is that it's entirely possible that these uh, restrictions from the United States will actually lead to greater domestic advantages for China in that it will just further spur domestic innovation and cause the Chinese government to double down on its own innovation and that will yield really positive results for China long term. All right. So, Ben, let's look now at the pressure the US is putting on its allies, including Australia, to follow suit, to do the same thing. Yeah, so a big part of this is that it's not concentrated in one country. No country has a stranglehold all, over all of this. So the United States needs to bring on board its allies and partners if it's going to effectively compete with China in the technological domain. And crucially, that means bringing on board Japan, the Netherlands, South Korea, Taiwan, Mm. these countries that are the titans of the global semiconductor industry. 
for now, in terms of the semiconductor export controls, Australia isn't important because we're not a really significant player in the global semiconductor industry. Mm -hmm. But we do matter in terms of the restrictions on outbound investment. Mm -hmm. It remains to be seen what Canberra is going to do on this. It puts the current Albanese government in a bit of a bind in that one of the signature hallmarks of the Albanese government is its efforts to stabilise relations with China. It wants to smooth things over. Mm. It clearly is in Australia's national interests, but also in China's interests to have a stabilisation of the relationship. If Australia was to sign up to a US-led effort to restrict the access for Chinese companies to capital coming out of Australia, that would be something that would potentially tank the relationship once again. But the pressure from Washington is likely to grow in the months and years ahead. Already, the United States has convinced Japan and the Netherlands to join the semiconductor export controls, and there'll be more and more of a push from Washington to bring on board as many allies and partners because they know that if they want to do this effectively, it needs to be a full court press. It can't just be the United States acting alone. I can see the Albanese government is weighing up whether it will clamp down on Australian investment in sensitive technology ventures. But as you say, this is a really sensitive time. But we could really get wrapped up, couldn't we, in this new sort of tech war? You'd have to say that from the point of view of Canberra, it is perhaps the worst time (laughs) to be having this conversation with the United States because the Albanese government is trying to thread this needle of maintaining a relatively tough national security posture on China, whether it be trying to keep China out of the Pacific as a security partner, while also, as you say, getting trade restrictions unwound and rehabilitating the trade and political relationship with China. So it's a really, really delicate balancing act for the Australian government. And the thought of being involved in a US-led finance containment effort of China is, I think, pretty confronting for policymakers and political leaders in Canberra. Mm, And Ben, just give me your verdict then. It may have gone unnoticed by many of us, but how big a deal is this? I think this is a monumentally big moment for the United States and China and for the world at large. My suspicion is that in decades ahead, when historians look back at the history of world politics, this will be one of the key turning points where the US-China relationship went further through the floor became even more adversarial and where world politics took on a much more hostile, much more negative, much more aggressive tone. The impact of this will reverberate for years and decades to come. Dr. Benjamin Hersevich is from the ANU School of Regulation and Global Governance. The United States and China have agreed to hold regular conversations about commercial issues and restrictions on access to advanced technology. This episode was produced by Laura Corrigan, Veronica App-App, Nell Whitehead and Sam Dunn, who also did the mix. Our supervising producer is David Cody. To get in touch with the team, please email us on ABC News Daily at abc.net.au. Thanks for listening.